Hello and welcome to this review of my Acorn Electron keyboard. It's from 1984, even older than my high tech, which makes it the oldest keyboard I have at the moment. Although when I say keyboards, I think it's actually an entire computer. It's based on the BBC Micro series, but it's quite small compared to them. Although it allowed for several expansion modules to be attached to the connector here at the back of the keyboard. It's got several ports here on the left side of the keyboard, one for connecting to an ultra high frequency TV, a video port, one to connect it to a color monitor, and one to connect it to an audio cassette deck, which is what it used instead of floppy disks, although it could actually be connected to a floppy drive as well. On the other side is the power input. As it happens, I have the original adapter and cable for it, which is this thing. In fact, I got kind of lucky with this. I got it at the recycling center for one pound and it had spent a considerable amount of time in a plastic bag before that. So it was in extremely good condition, especially considering its age. It hasn't yellowed much, if at all, and there's no dust or dirt anywhere. In fact, I haven't even cleaned it in the slightest. This is the state I got it in. Now, I can't actually use this keyboard, of course. It wasn't even meant to be compatible with any computers, after all, since it's a computer itself. But I've had some toying around with it and I found some interesting things. It's got a rather interesting 60% form factor, more or less. My first 60% in fact, the vast majority of my keyboards are full size and the only ones smaller are mostly navless. A few of my boards are actually even bigger than full size. 60% keyboards are quite popular with keyboard enthusiasts nowadays and despite this keyboard being over 30 years old, it's actually got some things in common with modern 60%. Most notably, the absence of an arrow cluster and F keys is taken care of with a function key. Yeah, a function key. They already had them in the early 80s, apparently. The F keys are on a function layer of the number keys, just like on modern 60%. And the arrow keys are a function layer too, although instead of being a T nav over the WASD cluster, instead they're a block nav over some of the symbol keys to the right here. The function key itself, interestingly, is on the caps lock key, which has its own dedicated indicator LED to the side here. The way I think it works is if you press the key once, it acts like caps lock, but if you hold it down, it toggles the function layer, whose functions are shown at the front of the caps here. The other keys have a huge amount of other function layer outputs as well, which presumably have to do with the Acorn programming language, such as go to, then, repeat until inputs etc etc the layout even tapers to the bottom just like the hhkb a funny coincidence it's surprisingly light for such an old device just 1.2 kilos which might sound a lot for a keyboard as small as this but don't forget it's actually a whole computer it's also quite tall even though it ironically uses low profile key switches specifically it uses futaba low profile linear switches these switches are a variation of Futaba's simplified linear switches, which in turn are a derivative of Futaba complicated linear switches. These low profile switches have just seven parts compared to the complicated switches record holding 16, but they're much smaller and especially shorter as you can see, which was a sought after virtue at the time because mechanical key switches were all very tall around this era, which wasn't very practical. The key feels extremely rough and scratchy, and although they're fairly short throw, they still feel heavy on the fingers. They're so scratchy as a matter of fact that you can actually hear some of the switches squeak. I'll try and demonstrate that to you, hopefully the camera picks up the sound. The key feel is so unpleasant that at first I thought the keyboard might be in worse condition than I thought it was and that the switches had somehow all gone to shit simultaneously. But as it happens, I picked up a set of re-legendable keycaps for £2 on eBay for these switches, which came with a bunch of new and unused switches of this sort and they feel and sound just the same, rough and squeaky. And to top it all off, I picked up this thing just a few days ago at the recycling centre, an Acorn BBC Master 128 from 1986, which someone had kindly pre-identified and dated with this note still attached to it. Now this one's not quite as clean, and it's broken, but it's not really dirty or anything, and the switches, also Futaba low-profile linears, feel and sound exactly the same. See if you can hear the squeak on this too.
All of which suggests to me that the feeling of these switches is not a product of unrepresentatively bad condition, something I very strongly try to avoid in my videos, by the way. That's why I try to only show you keyboards with the switches in excellent condition, because I feel otherwise my views and opinions of the key feel would be skewed. So I'm going to go ahead and claim that the horrible key feel is integral to these switches, regardless of the condition they're in. In fact, the key feel strongly reminds me of those criminally craptastic Amstrads I reviewed a while ago, as a matter of fact, and that's saying something. Though of course the build quality of the Acorn is much better, it feels solid and well built and doesn't sound hollow or weak. Here, let me show you. Doesn't budge. This in stark contrast to the Amstrads, of course. Isn't that the fuckest thing you ever heard? All the linear Futabas share the same keycap mount, just like other switches from the time such as vintage Aesop Case, Alps and even all Cherries, they use a proprietary cross mount that isn't compatible with Cherry MX. The keycaps are uniprofile with spherical tops, generally a good sign of properly old keyboards, and they're made out of ABS. The lettering is nice, high quality double shot printing, common back in those days, and they're fairly thin for the time, but they don't feel flimsy or cheaply made. They're pretty cool guys. The caps on the BBC Master are exactly the same, spherical uniprofile and ABS with double shot lettering, although they're obviously white on black, and there's a few kick-ass red and dark brown keycaps in there as well, which looks pretty nice. Overall, they're cool little keyboards, not the best for typing on, I'm sure, but it's a nice little vintage toy, and I'm quite happy with it. Hope you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching, and here is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.